So why do I and, and why do I think you should focus on affordable housing? Uh, this is a question I get from a lot of new investors. You know, a lot of folks sort of get you know attracted if you sort of use a monopoly as an analogy to, to boardwalk and park place. Where I might focus on sort of the, you know, I don't know what it is, the light uh, light blue and the, the orange and red, um, you know, sort of ignoring, uh, what would that be, the dark blue, uh, and I think it's yellow on that side. So I just thought I would put this quick video together to talk about why I do that uh, and why I think you should. And if, if you follow me, uh, why, why you will be, uh, you know, buying the pride of ownership rentals that I built uh, in the affordable housing area. So again, we'll go through the goals. So what do, why do I stay below the median? Uh, it might be obvious, it might not. So I thought I would just you know put put that out there. Also, sort of talk about why I don't look at Class A, right? Why I don't look at Class A properties, right? Top of the market kind of stuff. Um, you know, my goals really are to take what what I call slumlord, what which you know the rating agencies or whoever does this might call Class D, and why I try to turn them into Class B uh, properties. And then finally, what I'm doing, you know, with the focus on creating long-term affordable rentals uh, with reduced uh, or limited risk. All right, so here's why I focus on affordable housing. Um, frankly, I want it to always serve the largest market I can. Right? It gives me the, the greatest control and the greatest, you know, selection of rents, renters, and, and you know, I can be picking it and pick the best one. Uh, again, I also want to create things in this case rentals that m the most or the majority of people can rent it, it's sort of in that sweet spot uh, i don't want rentals um, that go sort of up and down with the business cycle right i i, I want to produce rentals own rentals that are really immune to the business cycle and that's really what we've been able to do in fresno is, is really buy um, stuff that's uh, immune to the cycle whether it was a dot-com crash or the 08 crash rents stayed the same or even went up in some of that uh, in addition, all the new development uh, is at the high end, or at least at the middle high end, uh, just because the cost to build is so high. So, you know, if you're not building any more of these and you're you're flooding the the high end of the market, um, you know, it's it might you know it might make sense, it might not for some of you, but I want to focus below that, right? I want to take I want to take existing stock and improve that. Um, the other one is just as more and more. You know, higher end stuff gets built, more and more sort of, um, you know, older homes get converted or upgraded or in some cases knocked down. It's becoming even more scarce. So the largest part of the market um, is not being served. So I, I want to fill that gap. Uh, and then lastly, you know, for me, holding rentals is a long term plan, you know, decades in, in, in the making. So I want to have a, a portfolio that is, is the least amount of risk and I, I can hold for the longest time. Uh, why don't I want Class A? Frankly, uh, no, I don't want Class A. I never want Class A. Um, it's, uh, you know, the turn of a Class A type property is just way expensive, right? You have to keep, always keep it up to, to a certain level. Uh, and in the end, um, you know, an extra rent in a Class A, you know, might be two or three hundred dollars, maybe three fifty, depending. Um, but it's um, it doesn't warrant the additional expense, in my opinion. It's also a market, right? When when the business cycle turns, people move out of Class A and they move into Class B, right? Maybe some people in Class B go to Class C, but um, you know, the you don't have to be in those high end units um, if the business cycle turns against you, and you're you're more likely to to move down in market, and, and that's where I want to be. Uh, and again, in Class A, they sort of over, they are what they are, right? There's no ability to create what I call sweat equity or forced appreciation or whatever you want to call that. They're already clean buildings, already put together, already all done, and, and you sort of take it or leave it. Um, it's right for some people. It's right for insurance companies. It's it's it is it's obviously a market that serves very well. It's just not a market that I'll be focusing on. Uh, and again, the other thing is, given the price variability or price differences, I'd rather have three Class B properties than a single Class A property. It's likely to have more rent, likely to have a bigger spread of um, uh, value, and then hence, when appreciation comes, my my three Class Bs will uh, will rise more. Maybe the single Class A is a, a bigger number, but I, if I can have three units combined, um, you know, my my appreciation uh, or net worth increase will be uh, larger in most cases.
Um, you know, my whole model is built on upgrading properties, right? I want to buy a slumlord class B property right? it's, um, and convert it to a solid class B. That's what my model is on. That's what I've done for 15 or 16 years now. It's what I've done for my first um, 10 or 15 properties I've bought and selling to different um, different um, buyers is I'm, I am absolutely seeking out class D's and, and turning them into class B's. And you've seen some of that in past videos, the one that compared slumlord properties with pride of ownership, uh, for example. Um, you know, for me, class B properties offer the greatest return with the lowest variability and the least long-term risk. All of those things are, are in my book, great. And, and if you're a full-time employee with a lot of cash, you, you really need to be, to be focused on class B properties because, uh, again, class A can come back to bite you. And then again, if you're going to really own these for 10 years, right, you'd love to rent to a family once and, and just have them be there. And, and, you know, if they stay there all 10 years, your, your chances of having a great cash flow property are, are pretty good. So again, I want to upgrade properties. It frankly makes me sick to see some of these properties out there uh, in the conditions people are asked to live in. So looking at fixing that or addressing that. Uh, I also want to create, you know, assets that I'm proud of. Uh, I now call them pride of ownership. Uh, because that's what I think, you know, investors with full-time jobs and, and not a lot of time need. Uh, so I'm going to serve that market. Uh, and again, I want to help people move from what I call crap to arch. Uh, again, crap standing for cash rich, asset poor, and, and arch being asset rich and cash happy. Right. So that's that's where you need to be long term. You know, when you get you know when you get too closer and closer to, to retirement you want to be asset rich and let appreciation and cash flow and you know all the tax advantages come back to help you so in the end that's why i focus on um, you know the biggest part of the market uh, affordable housing why i think you should too so uh, in the end if you like this video hit the like button leave a comment or question below and, and continue to help me to grow the channel please forward this on to your network or tag a few friends and, and ask them to join have a great day